All right, so now I am set up for animation production. I've got an assets file that's going to end up having a lot more layers eventually because I'm going to just keep piling new things into this. So when I want fire, I'm going to go to my assets folder and I'm going to bring in fire right into my assets folder, right? And just like all the compositing we've done, just like with the clouds, just like with the creatures, just like with the, um, the landscape, I'm going to use all those skills again. I can change the blending mode here. Oops, wrong layer. just to lighten. There we go. And then I don't even need to delete the black. All right. So I've got a nice fire asset here, but it's cut awkwardly there. So let me use some of my skills, right? I'm going to internally composite and take this edge and duplicate it. Command J and then Command T, transform it and then move it and put it up on the top. And it doesn't need to be perfect. This is just GIF animating. And I take the one behind and I'm going to erase away with a soft edged eraser. You're going to find your own solutions to some of these problems, right? And I get rid of the hard edge. And then I'm going to combine those two layers together and then change it to lighten. And now I've got one nice fire asset, right? And then I can transform it. And I know this is coming later. And I can shrink it a little bit. It's going to come out of the mouth. But I'm not even sure where the mouth is going to be yet, right? So that's my first fire asset. And I'm going to mark that gray. Okay. Here's the thing, though. This is where digital really helps. Now that I have one fire asset, I can just hit Command-J. And then Command-T and grow it and make this fire get stronger and stronger. Right. So that's where digital really gives you an advantage because we can make perfect copies and then edit them. So I don't need the fire yet. I'm not there. The next thing I need to animate is zooming in and having my creature move. Right. I only have one frame so far. It's this. So now, how do I start to zoom in? This is tricky. What I have to do is actually make a new box. So this is only if you want to zoom. Remember, I set it up to be 8 by 8 inches by 150. I'm going to use my guides, so use the move tool in my rulers, and I'm going to set a guide 1 inch in on each side. This is how you would do any zooms or pans. You make an internal box with your guides. Nope, we're not using any other animation program. Flash is a great program for vector animating. Yeah, you're going to love it. There are lots of specialized tools for it. And everything you see in the past student work is all done in Photoshop. All right, so I'm going to adjust it. One inch was too much to zoom in, so I'm going to go to three quarters of an inch. And then that's going to be my, my zoom framing, right? So what do I do now? Well, I know that for all these zoomed in frames, I'm actually only going to be selecting that box. Does that make sense? Now I want to make sure that that box is still a perfect square. So what I'm going to do is use the crop tool that's set to one by one, <laughs> exactly. Hit return. And then I'm going to reset 
well, no, not yet. I'm going to check my image size, make sure, and then write that down. This is all about organization, right? So it's 6.533 by 6.533. <coughs> which means that's a perfect square. So now if I take my guides and I make sure they stick to that, because sometimes placing guides by hands is not as accurate, then I know that it's really there. Now here's the great thing about Photoshop. The crop tool should be able to go backwards, except that I said delete cropped pixels, so we'll see. And so now I should be able to say image size Go back to eight by eight. Oh, not image size, shoot, canvas size. Canvas size, because I want to grow the space around it. Go back to eight by eight inches, right? And if I didn't have that selected, it would have kept everything. So let me go back in my history and do that again. So if this is showing you anything, it's that doing even just simple camera moves, you have to really think ahead. And the reason I don't want to get rid of this information is because later I'm going to zoom back out, right? So I need to keep it in there. So right now I drew that box, but I'm not sure it's exact. So I'm going to uncheck delete cropped pixels. I'm going to have the one by one square for my crop tool. I'm going to try to match my guides right? Hit return, check it, because sometimes it can be off by a few decimals. So that's 6.52. It's a little different than 6.533, but it looks fine. I say, okay. Now I change my guides to make them stick to it. I just move them back and forth and they'll stick to my new cropping. This is all just to set it up. And then I can go to image canvas size and grow it back to eight by eight inches. And because I had that for the crop tool, I had that unchecked. I wanted to keep all of that information before I had it checked because I don't want all of the other stuff outside because that has to be held in memory. Okay. So now I know I am all set. I'm going to hit command S. Now my assets not only has the different layers I can use, but it has the zoom in box that I will zoom in and out from. Already set. And I just have to be careful not to accidentally move those guides. Okay, so what's next? I wanna move the camera in a little bit for this next frame. I also want to move uh, the creature a little bit. So let's start with moving the creature. I don't do it by doing puppet warp on my creature layer. Instead, I always start with a duplicate of the creature layer. Let's use the advantages of digital. And then I'm going to say edit puppet warp to change the pose a little bit. And then I'm going to anchor my character at the neck, at the snout, at the feet. This, these anchors tell me how I can move it, right? At the back. Maybe at this back foot, we'll see. Maybe at the elbow. So now I can start playing with those anchors a little bit. Maybe I'll move the head down a little, move the neck down. Maybe I want to play with the horn. Right. Maybe I want to move the hip up a little bit, move the leg forward a little bit, and the foot, and this back ankle. And this is all on a duplicate. And then I'm gonna move this hand a little bit. Okay, so that's just a, a subtle shift from there to there. And if I like that movement, then that's gonna be my secondary pose, right? So I've moved my creature a little bit. I also wanna animate this other stuff a little bit, like the overlay layer. I'm just gonna simply animate its opacity just so the lighting changes a little. So from 100%, I'm going to change it to 90. And then the atmosphere. So each layer I can think about each time. I think the atmosphere, I'm, I'm going to just 
stretch a little bit. Then the coral, the coral I'm going to puppet warp, just like the creature, in anticipation that it's going to get eaten away eventually. So I might not do this every time, but right now I'm going to say edit puppet warp. It's just like animating the creature. And I'm going to anchor it a few places so it doesn't totally change. And then I'm just going to let it move in the wind a little bit. Just gently sway. Like it's a living thing. So the difference between this and this. Right? Actually, I don't like that movement at all because it looks like it's pinching and I need it to like sway, right? So that's why that command Z is really helpful to actually see what the movement is. So let me puppet warp it again and just keep it simpler. I'm gonna anchor it in the corner, anchor it in this corner, anchor it here, here, and here, the three highest points, and I'm just gonna sway it a little bit. It's going to start to the left, hit return. And I don't like that so much. It looks too stiff. So now I know I need to anchor it here and here and here and here and here. So it bends in the middle a little bit as it sways. There we go. That looks better. Okay, so I'm gonna use that. And now the atmosphere behind the coral. The clouds, I'm gonna start moving this cloud a little bit, just stretching it just a tiny bit each time. It was there, now it's there. And then the stars. The stars, I'm simply going to start expanding and rotating each time. That's probably too much. Yeah, let's just make it really, really subtle. One little click of rotate. That's all. So it was there, now it's there. Okay, now I've animated kind of every feature. So what do I do? I delete this frame that I flattened and I go to my red overlay layer and I hold down option and I say layer merge visible. And then I say command A, which selects all, or if you forget, you can go to select and all. So command A, and then I'm going to copy. So I can go to edit copy or command C. And then I'm gonna click on my stage and I'm going to say edit paste, command V. And now I have two animation frames. Now I did everything in that except what? I didn't zoom, right? So I forgot something. So I can throw this frame away and go back and delete this frame and deselect it and delete it. And just the one thing I forgot was to use my crop tool, hold down shift and option, and just zoom in a tiny bit. Or actually better than cropping, this is what I need to do. I need to hold down option, say layer, merge visible, right? But I select all, command A, but then I'm actually going to shrink the selection. So there's a few ways to do this, but the easiest is to kind of select all and transform. So actually, let me do this on an empty layer. So I'm going to select so I'm on an empty layer, I'm gonna select all, and then I'm gonna transform. Uh, I can't, because it's empty. It's the best way. Honestly, this is usually what I do. I set up guides for each panel. So if I'm gonna zoom in like 10 times, I wanna set up steps for each time, which is a real pain, but I'll show you how I do it. So I select,